And we still have our level one and our level two. So what we want to be able to do is progress from one level to the other. But here's the catch. Um, well, no, we're not there, quite there yet. Let's load a level. So if the number of bricks goes to zero, we're going to hard code this in right now. It's application.load level. And we give it a name, which is going to be level two. Okay, just going to hard code that in. We are in level one right now. And let me just make my life a little bit simpler. I'm going to remove all the bricks except for one. So as soon as I kill this one brick, it should send me to level two. Uh-oh. Cannot be loaded because it has not been added to the build settings. Ah, all right. So we're going to look at that for the first time. So in the file menu, there is a build settings option. And this is where we tell it what scenes are part of the build. Um, what, part, what scenes are part of the game. You can always play the current scene in the editor, but if you want to do anything fancier, you need to add more. So um, is this the only way to really do it? Add current? No, I know there's a different way of adding this. I'm just being foolish. But in the interest of time, let's go ahead and do it that way. So we'll go back into build setting. We're going to add this current. So we have level one, level two. And we can reorder these guys um, by just drag and dropping. Because when you play the game, when you actually play the real game, not in the editor, it's going to start off by loading whatever is at the top. So now we should be able to go back to level one and play and hit that. And boom, level two loads. Hey, that's great. Except did you notice what happened to my score? Let's go back over here. We're going to hit the first guy, boom, it goes to one, and then instantly drops back down to zero. Well, why is that? Well, it's because when I'm starting the scene, it's generating a whole new set of objects, including the player. If I go to level two, you can see my player is sitting in there. And the player starts off with a score of zero, so that's what's happening. So that's not really what we want, is it? So what we want is we want our paddle from scene number one to stick around between scene loads. Because what happens when you load a new scene, all the current objects are destroyed. And then in scene two, all the new objects are recreated. But we want our paddle object to persist from one scene to the other. So the first thing we have to do is in scene two, we have to get rid of the paddle. That's one. And then the second thing is in level one, we want our paddle to, be, to, to not be destroyed when we load a new scene. All right, fair enough. So the way we want to do that is to go into our mono develop, into our paddle script. And on start, the very first thing we want to do is we want to tell the game, don't destroy on load. And what shouldn't be destroyed on, loan, on load? Uh, our current game object, which we can do this way. Because you can, you can tell it other objects to do it. And again, this is handy if you're using a manager to spawn everything. But when the paddle initializes, it's going to tell the game, listen, keep me around. Let's give that a try and see what happens. Move over here, launch, and my paddle is still here. Of course, my ball isn't, so that's awkward. And also, the lives don't persist. For example, if I were to do this, uh, no, wait, I guess the lives do persist because they're part of the paddle, even though the uh, the GUI is not. There we go, we've lost a life. I'm going to hit a point. Oh, the lives have actually reset. Ah, now that's interesting. There's a couple of reasons for that. Because here's where we, we cache the GUI lives object. But when we're loading the scene, this object is being destroyed, and then it's gone. So what we really want to do is tell it to not destroy that. Or, of course, we could just move all this lives code into the on GUI and do it there. But you know what? We've got a cool little trick going on, so we're going to say, listen, also don't destroy on load the GUI lives. The big problem with this, and then, of course, if we go to scene two, so that we don't get a doubling up, because we would right now, which would be kind of interesting. Let's, uh, let's take a look. We're going to hit, oops, level one, play. We go to level two, and then we're actually going to have two labels down here. The one we have that didn't destroy from scene one, and the one that's in scene two which is why we need to get rid of that in scene two. But it is a little bit awkward in that if we were to somehow start to level two, and some games have that, right? Oh, you've already beaten level one. Well, next time you start a new game, we'll let you start right from level two. Well, level two no longer has a paddle. So obviously you're going to want to keep that in mind. And what some people do is they actually create a new scene. So really you're going to have your initial scene is going to be your main menu. And then when you hit start game, that's when it's going to load level one. Well, some people do, they have some sort of setup level setup scene, which would be where your um, your paddle would spawn and the lives counter would spawn and then tell it to not be destroyed. And then at that point, it loads the actual gameplay level and your actual gameplay levels would never have paddles and so on and so forth. But now we should be okay to do this. It's going to persist that. So it's just the ball at that point. And then we have to decide what to do. Um, so our load level, well, really what we want to do is spawn a new ball, which really is as easy as calling spawn ball, except for the fact, of course, that we're going to lose a life if we do it. So then we might want some sort of option where we can spawn a new ball without losing a life. We want, might want to move the whole losing a life thing into something else. We might want, uh, in the paddle, actually, what we may want to change this to is something like paddle die or lose life. 
Die is what we've been using. Well, die kind of means destroying things. So we're going to go uh, lose life instead, which will happen here. And then it'll also spawn a ball if we have one. Although, really, we want logic. Like, what if if lives is greater than zero, then spawn a ball, else player's dead, right? Then we're going to have some sort of logic, which is going to send maybe, maybe it'll send people to a scene that just says game over, you lose, something to that, something to that effect. Uh, so in our ball script, instead of calling spawn, whoa, oh, all right. Um, instead of sending this, we're going to want to say, ah, you, you lose a life. It's also going to happen to spawn a ball. Maybe we don't want it to spawn a ball. Maybe we just want to go minus minus, and in here we want to explicitly spawn it. I think I like this sort of logic. And so now in our brick script, um, oops. There you go, update that. In a brick script on a load level, then we can also do something like, uh, we've already got the paddle here, let's, uh, let's cache this to avoid calling it twice. Um, paddle script, paddle script equals this. So now we're adding lives, and after the level loads, we're going to tell it to spawn a ball as well. So now, if we get errors, Lose life, not live life. What the heck? Play. Move over here. Oh, we're not updating our lives properly. Oh, I see. It's because we aren't updating the lives except when we're losing a life. So we want to do an update to it at least once right over here. That should populate that. Let's give that a try. There we go. Start at lives four. Right, because now when we're spawning a ball in our start right here, it doesn't automatically lose us a life. So we're going to want to tweak that to be three, which makes much more sense. Now we still have the problem, then when we go over here and break that... Oh, it actually spawns it too fast! Did you see that? Take a look at the ball. I don't know if it'll show up on YouTube, I'm not sure what the refresh rate is going to be like exactly. But... Bam! It spawns the second ball after the function returns. That's actually an intricacy I wasn't aware of. This returns before the next level actually is truly loaded. So it's spawning the ball, and then the level loads, which kills all my balls. So just looking around, there's a few different ways to implement it. One, we could use the explicit level load async um, and use a yield, and basically it would load the level kind of in the background and then return when it was done, when it's actually truly good and loaded. Um, I don't think that's necessarily appropriate. What that sort of thing allows you to do is load levels in the background while you're playing. So in a first-person shooter, you could imagine that each individual level might be a very short section of a building, you know, a couple of rooms and a hallway, just to save on memory. But then as you near the exit, of the area as you're walking down that hallway and getting around that corner, it initiates a background level load of the next level segment. And then once you're, and then if, if you happen to get to the boundary too soon, then maybe you'll get a, you know, please wait loading. But assuming a reasonably fast computer and relatively small scenes, by the time you get to the corner and turn to the corner, the next scene will have already be loaded and you'll have never seen a level load. And then as you move forward, the, uh, the old levels can become unloaded. Um, but here, I think that's a little more complex than we need to do. I think what we're going to do is move the spawn ball function here. We're also going to remove it out of start. And instead, we're simply going to have a listener on, um, and what is it called? Oh, that's what it's called. On level was loaded. And if you're curious, it actually does get um, an int with the level number. Not that we're really going to use it, but it's cute that it's there. And so we're going to say, oh, OK, the level is loaded. Better spawn us a new ball. Let's give that a try. I'm a little unsure if it's going to run the very first time. No, it does not. Which is kind of interesting. But it should work after that. So I guess we are still going to spawn a ball when we first become live. And then we need to make sure we respawn a ball every time a new level is loaded. So let's give this a try. There we are. Works exactly as we want, and of course we can get rid of this debug error, or not an error here, but rather the debug logging, since we don't need to know uh, how many bricks are left because.